All right, so the Lord, it really should be translated, Jehovah says to my Lord, sit at my right hand. Next click. This word Lord, with a lowercase o r and d, is the Hebrew word Adoni. Adon is the word that's there. That dot right there, you see the dot over my red dot? About 500 years A.D. or so, so we're talking way after the days of the, that this was written, a bunch of Jewish scribes got together in a room to simplify things and said, we better start making some marks in our Hebrew text so we, people don't lose the true meaning. Because language changes over time. And Hebrew was a language with no written vowels. And words change in Hebrew depending on what vowel you stick in there. And they also did grammatical marks and other such things. That little dot is one of those marks. And it plays a key role in something I'm going to share with you in just a minute. This word Adon means sir. Sire, master. Um, today in Israel, if you want to say Mr. So-and-so, you say Adon so-and-so. So it's like Mr. It's kind of like Spanish. You call somebody Senor. Senor can mean a human, but they also call Jesus Senor Jesus, which means Lord in that context. Same exact thing. It can be Mr. It can be Lord. But it doesn't mean God. Next click. That was verse 1 and 2 we just looked at. Now in verse 4, it says, You are a priest forever in the order of Melchizedek. The Lord is at your right hand. Okay, the Lord says to my Lord, sit at my right hand. Remember that? Jehovah says to my Lord, whoever he is, to sit at my right hand. The right hand, the place of prominence. Jehovah said to my Lord, King David's Lord, sit at my right hand. The Lord is Adoni, sir. Next click. Now, in verse 5, they spell it differently. The Masoretes did. Look, exact same word. You don't have to read Hebrew to see that that big one is the same as that big one. That big one is the same as that big one. That big one is the same as that big one. That dash, same as that dash. The only thing different, now this doesn't count. That really means nothing. The only thing different is those two things right there. One's a dot and one kind of looks like a little T, right? You see that? Here's what the Masoretes told us. The Masoretes were not followers of Jesus. All they were trying to do was communicate the original meaning of the text with their dots and dashes. Adoni is human. Adonai is God and only God. Here's what the Masoretes are saying the original Hebrew meant. Jehovah said to my human master, sit at my right hand. Now that you're at my right hand, you are God. Basically, like this. He is both human and divine. That's who is being addressed in Psalm 110. This guy, after the order of Melchizedek, is both human and divine. That's what's hidden in the Hebrew in Psalm 110. According to the Masoretes who didn't believe in Jesus and had no reason to make us think he was divine. How amazing is that? Now, let's look at Melchizedek all over again. Melchizedek in Genesis is the king of righteousness. Jesus is called in Jeremiah the branch of righteousness. In Genesis, Melchizedek is called the king of Salem, that is, the king of peace. Jesus in Isaiah 9 is called the prince, king of peace. And Melchizedek rules over Jerusalem. Jesus is the king over Jerusalem. And a new heavens and a new earth will be made, and the holy Jerusalem will descend from God, and Jesus will be sitting on the throne, says the book of Revelation. Melchizedek is priest of God Most High. In the book of Hebrews, Jesus is called a priest, our great high priest. And then the question was raised, how could he be a priest? Because all the priests were from the tribe of Levi. And Jesus is from the tribe of Judah. That's the king tribe. There's no way you could be both priest and king. It was impossible. Unless there was another priesthood, the priesthood of the order of Melchizedek. Then you could be a priest and a king. Then we jump over to Psalm 110, and we see that the guy who's of the order of Melchizedek has a mighty scepter as king from Zion. In Psalm 2, the Messiah is the one with the mighty scepter who reigns from Zion slash Jerusalem. And we've got that up here as well. 
we see that this Melchizedek guy is King David's Lord. And remember, Jesus said, if he's his son, how can he be his Lord? It's impossible. Unless, of course, you happen to be the virgin-born Messiah, then it's possible. But they couldn't go there. But that's where Jesus was. He is called in Psalm 2, this guy of the order of Melchizedek, God's son. We saw in Psalm 110, he's both human and divine, giving us the true Jesus that you and I know. And we are told to kiss him and trust him for our safety. Now you know why I don't accept Melchizedek being Shem, son of Noah. It just doesn't jive. What you don't know is Melchizedek is talked about more in Hebrews chapter 5 and 7. But we don't have time to look at Hebrews 5 and 7. So you're going to have to go home and read it yourself. There are two theories about Melchizedek in all the scholarly journals I've read. Let me give them to you and then we'll, we'll finish up. Theory number one. This king of Salem who showed up to bless Abraham was a king, he was a priest, but he was just a man. Based on his name and all the cool connections, he was a type, a figure, a representative of the Messiah. That's what most people believe. It's not what I believe. In Hebrews 7, which you're going to go home and read, it says that this Melchizedek has no mother and no father, but like the Son of God, abides a priest forever. That doesn't sound like a human being to me. So how can you be both king of Israel and priest? if you're not from both Levi and Judah. Very simply. From Judah's side, you are the king. From Melchizedek's side, you are the priest. But in order to qualify for the Melchizedek priesthood, you've got to be eternal. That's the qualification. So I don't think the original Melchizedek was anything other than a manifestation of God in human form. Could I be wrong? Of course I could be wrong. But the evidence is so powerful Melchizedek, for one thing, no matter which side you take in this argument, Melchizedek points us directly to Jesus Christ without question. So these words will be our closing words, and they end the psalm. Kiss the Son. Blessed are all who take refuge in Him. Do you take refuge in Him? That's the question I want to send you home with this morning. All will be blessed who take refuge in Him. If you want to be blessed, if you want to inherit the biggest blessing that this world has to offer, the one blessing that you can take with you, you want to kiss the Son. You want to trust Him. You want to worship Him. You want to entrust your soul to Him. And it's very easy to do. Simply acknowledge your sin. Sin in the Bible, it's easy to understand, but impossible to avoid. Sin is when we do things God does not want us to do. If you've done that, let me see your hand. I'm putting up both of mine. <laughs> All right. If you have not done things that God does want you to do, that's sin in the Bible. And here's the, here's the clincher. The inability through your own power to change either of those two things. See, you've just admitted that you're a sinner. It was easy to do because we all are. You know it, I know it, God knows it, and he's the only one who can save us from sin. He sent his son of the order of Melchizedek to die for us and rise again. If we will acknowledge our sin and repent of it, tell God, I don't want that path anymore. I want you. I believe in your son. I believe he died for my sins and rose again, and I will follow him. If you can do that with all your heart, you will be blessed. You will inherit eternal life. And I encourage you to do that before you leave here this morning. Please join me in prayer. Lord, I'm, I'm excited about your word. I just love the mysteries you hide in there for us to discover. Thank you. And thank you for the prophecies, plain and hidden, about Jesus being the Messiah and Savior of the world through Abram and through David. And I proclaim proudly that I worship the Lord and I will take refuge in Him. And I pray that everybody who hears my voice here this morning at the worship mall, 
at Book of Life Community Church. On the radio, on the internet, on the TV, or on a stray CD. That your Holy Spirit would work on their hearts. And that they would know no peace until they make their decision concerning the Prince of Peace. In whose name I pray. Amen.